Ooh. It's been a fun week. So first of all, I want to say, dude, I love you guys. So with the Boost Controller video, there's a ton of people that chimed in. Give me some advice there and some different things that I've tried out. So when I wired up the Boost Controller, I wired it up as an inline interruption. So the idea is when the Boost Controller was charged, it interrupted the flow of air to the wastegate. Now there's a whole bunch of other different types of ways that you can run this. You could run this as a bleeder where you have a normal line going to the wastegate and this tees off and vents is the idea of it. And that way you can control the same method as it closes up or activates it. It actually closes off the flow of air out of the line and forces the air to go back to the wastegate and open it at that point. So that's kind of a bleed style. You also have the other one where there is no air going to the wastegate until the basically the boost controller is activated. Um, there's a style that that same controller I had as I'm reading through because it was used on TDIs. It was also used on gas engines as well. It's an N75 valve, I believe. And uh, they had it ran a little bit differently between the two. So I'm going to try the next style. I was going to plan on doing that this past day. Uh, problem is life got in the way and a huge tree. That was fun. Um, but essentially that's where I'm at right now. I'm working on that to get that in there, test it, and have a little fun with it there. Uh, so what I did do this past week is I played around with O2 sensor, more specifically the PID settings for wideband. And uh, there's quite a bit of settings here and it was kind of frustrating. There's a couple of things that I learned that uh, kind of irritated me a little bit. I don't know if they're planned or if there's something going on there, but I'm hoping maybe anyone else that's played around with this can uh, chime in and give me some feedback there as well. So one of the first things I had is that uh, if I start the car and let it warm up to a temperature, the wideband PID settings don't take effect unless I restart the car and it's over the temperature. So right here um, on my settings there's a, a question that says active above and then uh, temperature. So above coolant degrees Fahrenheit. I type in a temperature there, it would go past it and wouldn't start doing anything. As soon as I restarted the car though, it would. So that was kind of goofy to me. So be aware of that if you're playing around with this on Speed We Know and uh, I believe this is the February version. Um, I don't know if that's something that's known, unknown, don't know. Uh, the other thing that was kind of goofy is it's way too hyperactive and I couldn't figure out why. So normally with the PID settings, and I did a little video about this with, uh, with my idle control valve, the eye, the integral side of it, is how its ability to go and actually hit its target. So as you're putting in numbers there, as it's aiming for it, that is kind of the key number to say, can you actually reach the number you're looking for? Um, what happens is if the number's too low, then it won't ever correct enough to get to the number. It's kind of weird, but um, that's essentially how it works. Let's view this as kind of like, uh, like a car. So in this case, if I'm driving a car, I have my P, my I, and my D settings. So let's go ahead and talk about each one of those. For the I setting, this will like, be like your ability to hold the gas pedal down to be able to reach a certain speed, let's say 55. Now you can get to 55 miles per hour by hitting the gas pedal lightly and getting there boringly slow. Yeah, my grandpa. I mean, it, it just takes a while to get there. But what we do have is the P setting. So the P setting is saying, well, what I want to do is I want to give it a lot of gas, and then I want to back off and hold it at that eye. You know, essentially being able to say, well, okay, I gave it enough gas, I'm getting close to my speed, so I'm going to start backing off that throttle now a little bit and holding it at that point. So that's kind of your, your P, your I, kind of those settings there. The D would be like the brakes, okay? So, hey, we're coming up to a stop sign, whatever it is, we've, we've gone too fast at this point, we need to start slowing down, so I'm going to start applying my brakes. Now, it's not a perfect analogy, but essentially that's close enough to get you there. Uh, what you don't want to have happen is, let's say someone, uh, they go a mile per hour over the speed limit, you don't want someone to immediately hit the brakes. So if you have the D setting too high, that's what it's like doing. Uh, you get up a little bit, instead of someone just letting go of the gas on the coast, they just slam on the brakes. Um, yeah, not fun. 
So playing around with these is kind of where I'm at. So you can see right here on my screen, I've done everything. I've done 111, I've done 010, I've done you know, upwards of 50, I've done 120, zero, I've done all different types of settings to try and make that number achievable and have it perform. It's just not doing it for me, and I don't know exactly why. So after I played around with the PID settings, I said, okay, well, one thing I can definitely tell is the ignition events per step is too many. So I backed that off, and I started putting it as high as it could go. I think the most you can go is 256. As soon as I started doing that, I started being able to control it. It would be able to say, okay, well, I'm changing. It would wait a second or two, and then it would change again. And by then, it's starting to get to the O2 sensor and basically read these changes. So I don't know if anyone else is having these problems. My next step is to start looking for exhaust leaks. I wonder if they're coming into play, if there's something else going on um, to kind of allow this to behave the way it's behaving. What I did for my test, though, is that I put my AFR kind of out of whack by adjusting my VE table purposefully and I made it lean. And so right now it's trying to correct, make it a little bit richer and go that regard or go that way. And that's working fine. Um, I had a little bit of problem when I started doing it the other way. If I made it too rich and uh, tried to have the system lean it out, I started to get oscillations. So I'm still working on why, but uh, I'll get there. I want some feedback from you guys to kind of point me into anything that you've learned, played around with, things like that. But essentially, uh, a lot of these different settings are fairly normal. Uh, you've got your ignition steps per, or sorry, ignition events per step. So every time, how many times is the ignition going to fire a coil before it decides to look at the values and to make a change? Uh, the higher the number here, the longer time it waits before it says, okay, time to make a change and again. The idea is um, your O2 sensor should be getting changes fairly quickly, uh, but in my case, I had to put that number as high as it would go before it started behaving the way that uh, I would usually find as normal. So I guess my point now is I either need to move the O2 sensor much closer or uh, figure something out. Right now my O2 sensor is down by my feet. So it comes out of the engine, goes into the turbo, comes down the downpipe and it's down there near my feet. This was based on recommendations from the O2 manufacturer who uh, actually state they want it as far back away from the engine as possible so it doesn't overheat or have situations like that. Okay, now controller authority. When I played around to get this test kind of as fun as possible, I cranked this up as high as I could. So 16 was the biggest percent that I could give it and so I did so. I gave it 16% and said, let's have some fun. Let's see what it does. It made for some entertaining things. Before I got those ignition steps per, uh, sorry, ex the ignition events per step dialed in, it was going all over the place, oscillating, and man, it was either uh, feast or famine for my engine. Uh, this was all done at idle, so I'm just playing around. And uh, it was either feast or famine, but man, whew, it did not enjoy that at all. So uh, that's controller authority, and then you have only correct above AFR. The idea is if you peg the AFR at a certain value, um, you can do it that way. And also basically to say, look, if I'm in boost, and maybe I'm not, uh, I mean, it's possible on my car, I can get pretty high boost at 70% throttle. Uh, so maybe I don't want the, um, the AFR PID settings to kick in and say, you know what, let's start backing out fuel while you're in boost at 70% throttle. Um, so be careful of that, those kind of work in conjunction. Kind of the same thing there if you're on, uh, you know, kind of decel a little bit and get a little bit of lean pockets there or something along those lines, especially when you get to high vacuum areas, uh, don't want it to sit there and try working against you. All right. So active above coolant, so in this case, I set it at 120. A lot of times it defaults to a little bit closer to operating temperature. Uh, this is great, except for the problems I ran into, which was, hey, it, uh, I had to restart the engine to be able to get it to kick in and activate once it reached that temperature. So I could restart the engine once or twice while it was at below 120, and it wouldn't activate when it hit 120. It only activated if I restarted after it was above 120. So I don't want to call that a bug, but I might have to go find a, a picture here from the internet. <laughs> so
So, anyway, I work for a software company. I have to take humor in items like that. I don't code, though, so that's why I can't really dive into it, take a look at it, and find out what the heck is going on there. All right, so the low TPS, definitely, if you're in boost, you don't want the PID settings working against you and saying, you know what, let's pull fuel, see if you can get detonation. Yeah, definitely don't want that to happen. And then the ego delay start after is essentially for the wideband controller. So every time you start up your car, you'll notice that usually it heats up for a second on your O2 sensor. And then finally says, hey, we're at temperature. Let's go ahead and... Uh, give you some real values. But until then, you can get some really strange values. Sometimes they're all over the place. It just depends on the wideband O2 sensor that you're using. Um, some of them won't give you anything close to a usable value until um, it's warmed up. And so a lot of times that's after five seconds or so, and so that's why I placed that number there. And then there's the PID settings that we talked about. Basically use an accelerator pedal and a gas pedal as the example there. Uh, your ability to accelerate is your P, your ability to decelerate is your D, and then your ability to actually hit your target is the I. Um, I had to crank these down, still don't know why, so I'm kind of curious what uh, other experience you guys have had out there, uh, what you can do to help me out there, or uh, see if anyone else has ran into about the same thing, or what success you've had. So drop me a line in the comment section, I'd love to hear it. Um, I'm going to be doing a follow-up to my boost controller video next week, so thank you for everyone that left some comments out there, played around. Uh, so far, where I'm at, as I kind of stated at the beginning, is uh, I've done the interrupter style where I showed in the last video. Basically, it has to hit a high-duty cycle to be able to start controlling the boost and venting it out that way. And then also, I've done the bleed style where I hooked it up and I bled it off. Next up, I'm going to try the... Uh, the other style where basically the wastegate is fully inoperable until I go ahead and send signal from the boost controller valve to say allow some air in there and uh, and open it up. Now theoretically this should be the best control over the boost controller and the wastegate to allow it to ramp up to its target boost pressure very quickly and uh, be able to maintain it from there. So I ran this years and years ago on another car, and uh, basically I'm ready to try it out on the Datsun now. So let's see how it does. The only fear I have is, uh, well, it can run away a little bit. I already had that happen to me the other day where I might have hit, uh, I think, 14 and a half PSI. That was a fun moment. Um, luckily it hit boost cut and made a huge fireball. So that was probably entertaining for the person behind me. One other thing I forgot to call out, I'm changing the name of the channel. So it's been Two Nuts DIY for a while. Uh, the reason why is because I started this with my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law is still going to be having lots of fun with me. we got some projects to work on of his. He's got a 620 Datsun. He's got uh, an E34 BMW. He's got... Uh, yeah, he's got some fun cars um, that we can play around with, have some fun, tinker with. Uh, he's in the middle of doing a uh, manual swap on his BMW. And uh, yeah, I think we'll have some fun there. But the issue is, is it's kind of turned into more of my channel than his. And uh, we just have life get in the way. So I've decided that uh, Two Nuts DIY probably leaves some with more questions or misunderstandings about what I'm about. So I was probably just going to change that here this week. So anyway, if you see that pop up, please know why. That's just me uh, kind of branding it out and uh, having a little fun there. It's not that Brad's going away. It's just uh, the channel is not him and I focused solely. So we're going to have a little more projects there. Also, I'm, I'm probably going to introduce my other car uh, here coming soon. I haven't really shown that off yet, but I do have uh, another classic car that uh, is kind of my pride and joy. So I'll have to introduce you guys into that one. It's carbureted though. That's the downside. Ugh. But it fires up so amazing. I love that car. Okay. Anyway, stay tuned. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching.